I got a birthday blow for my roommate's stalker. Freshman year of college, it's my birthday. Friday, my birthday fell on a Friday. It felt perfect. I woke up Friday morning horribly sick. I've never been big into jerking off. Just never been my thing. Never really liked watching porn. Never. I always just felt kind of... <laughs> I don't know if it's because I woke up, I grew up naive or what, but I just never have really been a fan of porn or jerk it off. Just never satisfied me. I guess I'll put it that way. <laughs> I would, I'm a high energy guy. My buddies would always think that if I jerked off, it would calm me down or whatever, but I'm just a crackhead. I'm just a high energy person. I would rather, frankly, I'd prefer to get the real thing versus jerking off with my hand. I just fucking, I know it's not the most appealing topic, but that's just how I feel about it. And again, maybe that's just me, but that's just how I've always been. It's been probably, <laughs> it's probably been a month or two since I jerked off. I'm horribly sick all day. I feel like shit. My mom and sister come up to visit for my birthday. They take me, my roommate, and my buddy Maurice, who virtually lived in our dorm because he hated his roommate, out to dinner. We go to Frickers. For those of you in the Midwest, Frickers is the most bomb wing place ever, in my opinion. Love it. We go back. My mom gives me some DayQuil. They leave. I take a nap. I'm starting to feel a little bit better. So I tell my buddies, you know what? We can go out tonight. Mind you, I've taken DayQuil, <laughs> and now I've taken NyQuil at this point. And now we're chugging four locos, getting ready to go to the bar. It's February. My birthday's in February, so it's freezing cold. This is why BG was the greatest college town when I was there before Pike ruined everything. We had a transport, and they might still have it. They had a bus that would take students from dorms and campus down, down, right to the bars. We go to Uptown. We bump into some girls who we had seen out all the time, both very attractive girls. I was pursuing one of them. My roommate at the time had tried to pursue the other one, and they didn't hook up or anything. They had, I think they literally went to Walmart and like maybe went out to dinner once or maybe lunch. Long story short, he hung out with her like twice, and he's like, dude, Tom, this chick is crazy. Like, stay away from her. And I'm like, hey, I'm into her roommate anyway, so it's fine. That night, I'm bound and determined to get something on my birthday. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to this stalker girl's roommate. She's in between boyfriends, yada, yada, yada. Same old shit. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm not putting up with this tonight. You don't want to go home with me? I'm going home with your fucking roommate. So I, <laughs> I immediately start flirting with her roommate. It's a long shot in my head, but her roommate's into it. Oh, it's my half birthday. And the whole time, mind you, Maurice and my roommate are like, Todd, this chick's crazy. I'm like, I'm on another fucking level. I've taken Dayquil, Nightquil, and now I'm heavily drinking. I don't give a fuck what happens tonight. I was just filter off. I'm fucking going ham tonight. I'm drinking like crazy. At one point, my roommate and Maurice are like, we're going back. Because the girl's roommate had left because she was pissed her roommate was flirting with me. And my buddies were done for the night. My roommate goes back with his girlfriend and Maurice leaves with them. It's just me and this girl. <laughs> and they're laughing their asses off as they leave, right? Tom, Tom, I'm like, fuck it. I'm doing it. <laughs> I go back to the dorm, me and this chick. We, we had a few more drinks together. Then we go back to the dorm. By the time we get back. It's probably one or two in the morning. We're making out in the hallway. It's just aggressive. Just aggressively, she grabs me. We start making out. I'm like, I knew this chick was crazy. I just didn't know it was going to be a great time. <laughs> so we like stagger into my dorm. Not even because we're that drunk at this point. We're just making out. It's pitch black. And you just hear snoring. And I'm like, my roommate went back to his girlfriend's dorm, obviously, because he knew what was going to go down. Maurice is out cold. Now, Maurice has sleep apnea, okay? This was before it's diagnosed, so he's just violently snoring, okay? <laughs> and she's like, and we can't go back to her dorm because her roommate's there. So, I'm like, he's asleep. Fuck it. He's asleep. Who gives a shit? I'm thinking, like, I've missed this, and uh, and this is after the unshaved pubes. Unshaved pubes cost me my first college hookup. This is my first college hookup on my birthday, and I'm like, this is going down. Nothing is stopping this tonight. That's what's going through my head at the time. She's down. We go up into my bed. I do my part. And it's her turn. And she's like, I don't have sex. I'm like, that's fine. I've, in my head, I'm like, of course it's fine. I'm a fucking virgin. I, I don't even not inter even interested in that at this point. She goes down. She starts giving me And 
<laughs> and Maurice, I, I'm like monitoring the snoring. So I'm not even enjoying this as much because there's another person in the room. But I'm just making sure Maurice is asleep. Cause, and, and again, sleep apnea. So it's violent snoring. It's like, <laughs> like, it sounds like he's choking until he wakes up, right? So I'm like, please don't wake up right now, dude. Just please don't wake up. It's all I'm thinking. And he just continues to snore. She does her job. Now, I'm not going to go into too much verbal detail on this, but I had not touched myself in a month at least minimum so when it happens i'm gonna come my but my boys out there will know when you bust that type of nut <laughs> it's just from your toes to your fingers dude you're feeling it and i'm just like whoa shit oh my god and mind you i'm also like pretty buzzing pretty good still so i'm like whoa this just feels amazing right now <laughs> It just keeps going, and I'm like, oh, my God, dude, this, this is still happening. And she finally comes up. <laughs> I never thought I'd tell this. She finally comes up, and she's like, do you have any water? This girl pulls up a trooper, truly a trooper for this. Suddenly, Maurice is awake. We have a pack of water under the futon, a full 24 pack. Now, I don't know how it is for most college kids these days, but for us, bottled water was a valued commodity. Not something that you normally get because you're all broke college kids and it's expensive. If your parents come up and buy you that, you're hoarding that. You're hiding that shit like gold from anybody else. Friends, it don't matter. You're hiding that fucking bottle of water. I know there's a brand new pack untouched under our bed, <laughs> under our futon. Maurice is on the futon. Like I said, suddenly wide awake. And I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it, but it's the quote of a lifetime. <gasps> We ain't got no water. Insert the word. I'm just dying. I'm like trying so hard not to laugh. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. He's like, you got to go down the hall to the community fountain like everybody else. <laughs> she leaves and I am crying, laughing. She gets up, runs down the hall, comes back. I, I'm just, I'm just like, oh my God. I'm trying so hard not to laugh. But I'm also drunk at this point. So I tell Maurice, like, were you awake for anything? He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like. Never fucking mind nothing because I'm under the covers. You can't even tell that anything's happened and nobody assumed anything happened because it's me. But now that Maurice is awake, he's putting one and two together. So he is texting in our group chat of friends. He's like, well, time, 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 time. And all my buddies are like, oh, time, time. I'm like, dude, stop. <laughs> like, and now I've sobered up enough to realize like who I'm with. I know this chick's crazy. She comes back and she's like, Maurice, I tell Maurice, you got to go back to your dorm for one night. Go to your fucking dorm. So Maurice's like, fine, whatever. Maurice leaves, goes back to his dorm. The girl comes back and she like wants a set of my clothes. She wants a pair of my joggers and t-shirt to sleep in. I'm like, at the time, I'm like, whatever, it's fine. I don't even want her to sleep in my bed with me at this point. Like, the job is done. This has been a successful birthday at this point. My first college birthday has gone well. Fuck this. Like, I don't even want her in the bed. And she's like, I'm coming up. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Scoot over. Be it. Try to be a gentleman about it. At this point, she's done more than enough. Trooper for f swallowing a month of my kids. Like, that was something that I would say anybody couldn't do, but she did it. Salute. So, <laughs> next day, wake up early morning. She leaves, and I swear to God, as soon as she leaves, mind you, she's still wearing my clothes, which I felt like was unnecessary. Being the innocent, naive virgin, whatever you want to say, I'm just like, dude, why did I do that to myself? Because it's one thing, like, you get sex. Every, every guy gets sexual urges, right? Like that's the reality of it. But it takes a. If you don't jerk off and watch porn, like I like I said, never really have gotten into that. It takes a while to develop a control of that stuff. And when you get out drinking, instincts take over, and you you know you want to hook up with chicks. It just it's the nature of the beast. That's why drunk hookups are such a iconic and common thing in our society today. That's just my take, but that is what it is. She texts me the next day. When do you want to meet to get your clothes back? And you can tell she's texting like trying. She had been texting like trying to like create conversation. I'm like, no, 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 no. This was a one time situation. This was a one time thing. I tell her that I have left town to go hunting. I am sending Maurice on my behalf to pick up my clothes because ironically, these chicks lived in the same dormitory as us, but in separate wings. There was an east and west hall to this place. We were on the east side. They were on the west side. So. I send Maurice to this joint, um, like a computer lab conference room type place to get my clothes. He brings them back. What was even worse about it is the next day when I wake up, like as soon as she left, Maurice is just grilling me. He comes in, Tom, 
I'm, you know, like just going nuts because the chick was crazy. She was off the wall crazy. Just one of those crazy bitches. Great time. Great time. But she was crazy. He didn't want anything to do with her outside of that. My buddies already knew that, which made it just that much worse. So, like, my buddies come over, my roommate and his buddy, and his girlfriend, they're just grilling me. How was your night, Tom? What time, Tom, Tom? <laughs> and I'm just like, you know what? It is what it is. It happened. I can't change it now. And it was a great fucking story, all things considered. That quote, we ain't got no water. I mean, hardest I've ever laughed in my life. And I couldn't even laugh in the moment. And just the audacity. We have a pack of water. We couldn't spare one water in Maurice's eyes. He's like, nope. You go down the hall of the community fountain. <laughs> but looking back, as I reflect on that story of freshman year of college, and I reflect on my four years of college. I've been friends with both of those guys now for six years. Maurice specifically. We couldn't have come from different backgrounds. Brotherhood. Yeah. Right. Brotherhood. Night and day difference of our images. And I, I just, I bring that up because for us, I think it proves that true friendship doesn't see color. You don't see religion. You don't see politics. And the reason I'm saying that specifically in today's culture, I just feel like that is something that is just dividing us. It shouldn't ever divide a friendship. If you're true friends with someone, it shouldn't matter who they vote for. It shouldn't matter what their religion is. It shouldn't matter what skin color they are or their heritage or cultural background, whatever. That stuff doesn't matter. When you're friends with someone, you're living in the moment. You're making life memories and experiences with each other. That That's a special thing. And that's a relationship that shouldn't be affected by that stuff. Because Maurice and I, we don't see eye to eye on hardly anything. And yet he's one of my best friends. He's like family to me. I'm just going to be honest. I feel like our government and our news world and our media world today they try to promote stuff to divide us as a country, and that's just fucked up. I mean, we are the United States of America. We should all be working together to come to at least a perspective and a place in this country where we are all seeing eye to eye and having mutual respect for each other. Shouldn't matter what color, what race, whatever. We're all equal. And that's something that I feel like we've gotten away from because we listen to social media and our government trying to divide us. And that's just, in my opinion, that's what's going on right now. So... Shout out Maurice for always being one of my best friends, always having my back, and I always do the same for him, and I appreciate that. And my last closing point I'd have to say with, with the whole hookup things is, and, and, and just with girls in general, I would say, make your intentions clear from the very beginning. I've learned that the hard way now multiple times in my life. If you're going to date a chick and your intention is to date him, it don't have to be right away, but make that intention clear. If your intention is a one-night stand, then make sure that intention's clear. If it's hookup buddies, make that intention clear because it takes the drama out of those situations, like these toxic girl, toxic guy things. If your intention's clear from the beginning, then there can't be any miscommunications. And if someone ever gets caught up and thinking it's something that it's not, you remind them of what it is. It'll save you a whole lot of drama if you just do what you say and say what you mean. That is just... And I've learned that the hard way. I'm not saying that I'm not guilty of doing the opposite of that but I, I think it's an important thing for all of us to know and talk about because shit man I have put myself in some fucked up situations and I've made an ass of myself by saying and doing things that I wasn't really intending on doing so that would be my lesson on this episode and man what a what an experience what a birthday that's it we'll be back with more episodes soon hope everyone's well talks with Tom I was riding around town thinking to myself, is it gonna get easier? I'll be up in the way of the street and big, but I can't even breathe no more. What's it to me? What can I see? Taking shots by the lake till I can't. Mic check. Yep.